know where my limits are. Now, for young entrepreneurs to be kind of uh, understanding your own limits is quite a quite a job. It's very difficult because you are so enthusiastic. You have the world. You are powerful. You are healthy. Probably you are handsome or you are pretty, whatever. So how are you going to think about limitations? That is so true. You know what? That's a huge challenge. I remember those times and that's a huge challenge. But let me tell you what. When we were young, we had that. You can push yourself and you can get over that. You know, you can push yourself really hard and you can totally recover it the next day. And you can hurt and you can, you know, nature is really great. You can have the recovery of a 25-year-old when you push yourself beyond your limitations. At this time, I am, you know, I'm 50 and at this time you can't, I can't go all the, all, I can do an old niner. I, Right now, you know, when I was dating my husband, we used to do every 15 days, we used to do a red eye. And I literally was working for President Clinton. I would sleep three hours a night and I would do a red eye with my husband, go to see my husband, come back. And I, it was like nothing. Right now I do a red eye and I'm exhausted. I'm mean, literally exhausted. I have to sleep like three hours, you know, and it's just, it's crazy. So anyway, so it's completely different. It's, I, it, I don't know what to tell you. It's, so, so when you are young, you have the green light to fail, to push your limits. Exactly. I think it's, nature is so wise. You have the nine lives of a cat, right? When you're young, you're not going to die. When you're older, you have wisdom. And it's probably, that's why, because you can't have the luxury of failing. You can't push yourself with anything, you know, physically or mentally. You can't push anymore like that. Can you be stubborn and wise? You can totally be stubborn. I'm still extremely stubborn, but I'm just wiser. You know, I'm still super stubborn. Oh, my God, my mom and my husband. They say, you're stub more stubborn than ever. But, you know, but, but I'm stubborn, but wiser. Like, I, you know, I, I look at the coffee maker for... 15 minutes because I can't make it work, but I sit down and I look at the instructions and, and I make it work, but I don't shake it and, and, and do it and hit it. And, you know, all these things that I used to do when I was younger, I, I am more strategic. I'm more, more thoughtful. I'm more considerate with people. I'm more empathetic. I'm more compassionate. Um, I think more about the consequences of everything that I say to others. Um, I'm more, um, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I think I'm a better person. That's awesome. At the same time, if you don't challenge the status quo, the how things are, you will never advance uh, humanity. So humanity will be this, in the same place, correct? So the inventors, the entrepreneurs are the ones that really challenge the what they see. Without that passion, we'll not be where we are at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. We, we have to continue. You know, age doesn't, doesn't mean that we're not as challenging and we're not as, um, inquisitive and curious and ambitious. Not at all. I think, you know, on the contrary, I think we're more powerful and I think we're more compassionate. We have, I have, my focus now is less about making money and much more about transforming. Right. I mean, it's, you know, my my basic needs are covered. And now it's it's about making a better world, about what is going to happen to my kids world, what is going to happen to my community's world. Um, how am I going to be remembered? My legacy, my my colleagues legacy. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. Now, the glitch that happens once the student becomes or get walks into the real life is huge. So many youngsters go to school, to colleges, and then it's so the, the real life is so different. How could you tell them to adapt? What 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 would be the a good advice for you from you to them? How to connect with real life? That's a good one. That's a good one. You know what I. Well, you have two kids. One is 16 and the other one is 19. 19. So that's exactly. the age when they are coming into real life. That's a good one, Fernando. I think that, God, I don't know if there's an advice that I could give them except 
put yourself out there and live. I mean, I don't know if there's any advice that I can give that is not, you know, live life. You know, experiment in, in the good way. Not experiment with drugs, but experiment, you know, failure. Maybe, you know what? Yes, I do have a great advice that I wish somebody would have given me, which is lose the fear of failure. I wish I would have not been afraid of fail, of failing. I think I would have grown much faster. I think I would have been successful much quicker. I would have learned my lessons much earlier. I would have put myself out there much more aggressive. I, I wish somebody would have told me that. Yeah, that's the different, the generational difference between parents before and we parents today. Exactly. Because right. failing actually is like breathing. You have to exactly. fail in order to walk. Exactly. It's impossible not to fail. Totally. Right? It's like love. If you are just loving, I mean, you don't know what uh, unlove or hate is. You don't know the contrast. You don't understand love. Exactly. Exactly. You put it perfectly. How can you know what you want in a partner if you've not known what you don't want in a partner? How can you know how much you love a person when you've had a relationship that has really been made you suffer? How can you know that a house is what you want when you've seen houses that you know are not the house that you want? Like, how can you... It's it's just... Honestly, I think that my 20s were spent avoiding what I didn't want when I actually should have been much more open about just not just seeing, just living, just, you know, not avoiding things, but just living. So what, uh, you know, changing the subject, organization, you know, we launch businesses, we're young, we just want to do it and we are excited. and But, you know, there is always lacking something, which is, I think, organization, how to make it happen realistically. What do you think about? About organizing your time? Your your business. Because, you know, what I'm saying is sometimes we are so enthusiastic about doing something that we forget about the real anchors or the reality of the business. Don't you think? Yeah. No, you're right. Um, wow. That's a, that's a good one. You know, I, I always try to prioritize, but it's hard because... You know, you I I always end up doing what I want to do sometimes. I mean, not always, but most of the times. I think that, you know, sitting down with your partner and and setting priorities and saying, you know, are you going to focus this year on revenue or are you going to focus on transformation or are you going to focus on creating a change politically? Are you going to ch focus on creating a change on um, me in media, I think it's prioritizing. Depending on what you want to achieve, prioritizing your your work and your time, and uh, and then focusing on it, and just be very assertive about it. I appreciate what you are saying. Actually, now you are the executive director of the Latino Donor Collaborative. Right. Tell me more about that. What is that? LDC. LDC. The Latino Donor Collaborative is an, a nonprofit organization, a non traditional nonprofit organization uh, made out of uh, the top business Latino leaders in the United States that are together uh, and that work together on rebranding and creating a real image of who Latinos are in the United States. So that tells us that there is a problem with the branding or the image that we, we have. What was the image that we have today that we are trying to avoid or reconstruct? Exactly, Fernando. What happens is that for whatever reason, in America, there is the conception that Latinos are lazy Uh, that they come to this country to just use resources that are that do not belong to them, that are all recent immigrants, and that are like some politicians like to say, rapists and criminals. And there's nothing further than the, from the truth. Latinos are actually the most productive, 
the most hard workers, the most law abiding people, family oriented, entrepreneurs, hardworking. And what I'm saying is not just the perception of mine. All the reports, all the numbers, all the statistics by the U.S. Census, by the government numbers, by the main universities, Stanford, Columbia, Harvard, um, Yale, every number, the official number of the United States says that. So the difference between what people in America perceive and are able to say and the reality of the numbers is outstanding. It's ridiculous. It's like if I told you it's daytime and the reality is that it's nighttime, but people believe you that it's daytime. It's literally that contradictory. So what the Latino Donor Collaborative wants to do is to actually create a real image of who Latinos are. That's so important. Do you have any numbers? We do have numbers. It's incredible. So, for example, 54% of all the new houses in America are bought by Latinos. If you take in account that only 18% of the population of the United States are Latinos and 54% of all the houses being bought are Latinos, imagine how powerful we are in, in, in numbers. A hundred percent of all the growth of the cars by Honda, by Ford, by Hyundai are Latino bought. As I said, the majority of all the new businesses are founded by Latinos. $2.1 trillion of the GDP of the United States is produced by Latinos. If Latinos were a country in America, within the country, within the United States, we would be the seventh largest economy of the, of the world. So imagine this. Latinos are 56 million human beings. India is 1.2 billion human beings. Well, we produce more than India. Even though they are, they are 10 times more people. So we Latinos are amazing. Amazing. When stupid people out there say that we are draining the system and we come here to, you know, make the country worse, that's the biggest lie ever. This country would be nothing without us. This is the rebranding that we want to do. We want to bring all these real numbers to show people who we really are. So, and that's to empower the Latinos. That is exactly to empower Latinos and to empower our country. Because if it was not for us, this country would be going down in, eco in the economics. And so we want to make people aware that they better take care of Latinos because if not, the country will go down. All first world countries have a demographic problem. All first world countries are losing demographics. If it was not for Latinos, this country would too. So we better encourage the empowerment of Latinos, because if not, we will be like Japan or like Germany or like all the first world countries. That's our point. Very important. Totally agree with you. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'll be all committed to help you out because what you are saying is the absolute truth. And it's, it's uh, sad that, that the portrait of Latinos in USA is so poor and s such a lie, you know, it's so far away from reality. And that's something that we have to fight for it. Now, let's go back to your personal life. Is there a person in particular that you admire the most, beside your family, of course, alive or not alive, is a figure in the world that you admire the most? Um, there are so many. Quite frankly, there are so many that it's almost like I don't want to say one because then the others are going to, um, I don't want them to get offended. But, uh, da, 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 okay, so, so many. But I'm going to say one, even though they're, people are going to think that I say it because, because he's my boss, but I'm not saying it because he's my boss. But the chairman of our board, is incredible. He literally dedicates his life to empower the, the community.